So you're going to get your study guide today and you're going to work on it in class Friday and Monday. And when is your test? Tuesday. Tuesday. We take our chapter six test. Everything that was on the chapter six quiz is going to be on there. And then we're adding graphing. So I believe you have two graphs. I'm not going to tell you which two of the six you have to graph, but you'll have to graph two of them. I believe it's two of them. Might be three of them, but I think it's two of them. So we'll see. All right, so tangent. <clears throat> Remember that tangent has a period of pi. So our period is pi over b. And the thing about tangent is the graph of tangent goes up. It looks like this. So I like to remember that tangent, the wave goes up. Because we're going to graph these pretty fast because we know our pattern. And the pattern is going to be, there's only going to be three points. K minus A. And then our K. And then our K plus A. Those are our three points going in between. Okay. So yesterday we actually found, because we were graphing the parents, so I wanted you to see what it looked like. So we actually um, looked at our unit circle and we divided to see, okay, well, what was the tangent of 90 and what's the tangent of 180? So we're going to go a little bit faster today, though. Okay. So the first thing is, do we have a shift? So when we look here, First of all, we know that tangents, first asymptote, if you look back at your example, look back at your example we graphed yesterday for tangent. The parent of tangent, I'm just going to write what we know about the parent. For the parent of tangent, where was our asymptotes at? What did it say? What did we write for our asymptote? We had asymptotes at... Our asymptotes were at um, x equals, what was it? Pi over, pi over 2, and it was what? Plus or, minus. Plus or minus pi. That's the parent. But because we have this parentheses right here, we're going to have a shift. Okay, so instead of my first asymptote occurring right here, it's going to shift. So I want you to take your parentheses, which is right here, take this, set this equal to zero, to figure out where we need to move it. Because we're just going to move the whole parent graph. We're going to move it. Okay, so what direction do we move it? So if we take x minus pi over 4, so let's figure out our shift. If I take x minus pi over 4 and set that equal to zero, what do we get? X equals what? Pi over 4. Good. So that means that my asymptote, and I just mark where this is where the mama is. I'm going to move this what direction, left or right? So it's positive, right? When we solved it, do you see how we solved it and it's positive? So if it's positive, it's going to move what direction? To the right and how many jumps am I moving it over just once okay so let's do this again I want you all to I want to make sure you all understand because someone did say yesterday that graphing in radians is really really complicated and that's really common and actually when I used I've been teaching pre-calc for a long time I used to have everyone converted to degrees because pi over 4 that can be confusing so what is pi over 4 45 degrees. Okay, so what I'm saying is I'm counting by 45s. So let me zoom in. So this is 45. So then that would mean that this would be 90. And this would be 135. And this would be 180. Okay. In the normal parent function, we have our first asymptote at 90 degrees. But because we have this parentheses, which says x minus 45 degrees, when I solve it, I get x equals positive 45. 
my first asymptote is not going to be here at the blue it's going to move to the green yes For a tangent, I would. For a tangent and cotangent, I would do it totally different. Okay. Yeah. For a tangent and cotangent, I just remember the pattern. So what I would study on my note card, I would make a note, note card about what does tangent look like, where is the asymptote. Because if you know where your asymptotes are and you know that it goes up, once you put your asymptotes down, you're just going to repeat that same pattern going up. All right, so my first asymptote is going to be where I put the green. So let's go ahead and draw our asymptotes right there. So I'm gonna draw my asymptote in red. So this is where my first asymptote is because I had to shift. So my first asymptote is at three pi over four instead of pi over two. The period, what is the number in front of X? Let me look over here. What's the number in front of X? One. So if I take pi divided by one, I get pi. That is my period. My period is pi. So now that I know I'm starting here, how many hops am I going to go left and right to draw my asymptote? Pi is 180 degrees, and 180 divided by 45 is 4. So every four hops, I want you to draw in an asymptote, going both directions. And you only need to have three periods, but sometimes I'm extra and I do a lot more. So I'm only going to do one, two. I mean, you only need two periods, but I usually do more than two. So I'm going to go to the left and to the right a couple spaces so from here one two three four right here and then i'm going to hop again one two three four mm, and i'll do one more okay so and don't graph this down don't don't graph this just look, everybody look. When we graphed tangent yesterday, we had three points, right? And our three points, we started at negative one, we had zero, and we had positive one. That was yesterday. But do you all notice that in this graph, we have a vertical shift right here? So what is that going to tell me to do with these three dots that we used yesterday? They're going to do what? go up one. So instead of them being here, here, and here, they're gonna hop up one. And they're going to be here, oops, not the highlighter. Here, here, and here. So those blue dots represent the transformation. And when you graph it, it's just, it increases. It looks just like that. That is your pattern that you're going to keep repeating through the walls. I think of the asymptotes as walls. So let's go ahead and do that again. So here, here, here. Oof. This is raggedy. My graphs look kind of raggedy. Here, here, here. Here, here, here. And that would be your graph with the transformation. So with tangent and cotangent, I like to figure out where I'm gonna shift. Where do I shift my asymptotes? And then do I shift, shift up my three points? Do I shift them up or do I shift them, shift them down or do they stay where they're gonna be, where they're gonna stay? All right, so let's go ahead and write our asymptote. Our first asymptote, our first red wall, was at pi over two, but I moved it to the right. So it was at 90. It was at 90, but I added 45. So instead of being 90, it's 135. Or three pi over four. 
So this first red asymptote is at three pi over four. So my asymptote is going to be at x equals three pi over four, and it's plus or minus my period. Because every 180 degrees, we have an asymptote. My domain is all real numbers. And then we would say X cannot equal. Pardon this interruption. We need a testing continues. Students should report to their AM testing room. Thank you. So our domain is X cannot equal three pi over four plus or minus pi n. And what about our range? Look back yesterday. What was the range for tangent? Tangent and cotangent, they have the easiest ranges. All real numbers, because this graph is continuous. Range goes from the bottom to the top. And if I trace my graphs from the bottom to the top, it is continuous. It doesn't have a break like secant and cosecant. So my range is all real numbers. All right, last one, let's do a cotangent with some transformations. So cotangent. So cotangent, the wave doesn't go up, what does it do? For cotangent, it goes down. So that's how I remember it. I remember that my wave is gonna look like this. That's what it looks like, it goes down, the three dots. Where do we usually start? If you look at the parent function for cotangent, where was my first asymptote? Because cotangent is cosine over sine. And the first place where sine is zero is at zero. So I would normally start, and don't write this down, but this is where it would normally be, where I have that red line. But we have a shift. Okay, so when I look at my parentheses, this is telling me I have to shift it. What direction do I have to go? Am I going left or right? Left, good. And how far to the left am I gonna go? Twice. So when I take this X plus pi over two, which is X plus 90 degrees, and I set it equal to zero, I get that X is negative pi over two or X is negative 90. So this first asymptote is gonna move twice to the left, one, two. So I'm gonna erase this and put down my first asymptote. Now let's see if we have a period change. What is that number in front of X? right here what's the number in front of x one so because it's one my period is still pi oops i put that in the wrong place right here my period is still pi so every four hops starting here i want you to make another asymptote going both directions you're gonna go left four, draw an asymptote, and then go right four and draw an asymptote. So let's do that. So every 180 degrees, we're drawing in an asymptote. And again, on the test, if you have a tangent or cotangent, you would only need to draw two. But because I like, I just, I usually just do the whole graph. Okay, so go, if you look back at cotangent, what did our points do? We started at one, and don't graph this, and then we hit zero, and then we hit negative one over and over again. Those were our three points. But do we have a shift? Yeah, we have a shift. So right here is telling me to move those points, those three points, I'm gonna move them down to. So my new points, I'm gonna take this point, drop it down to. So it's going to fall here. Oh, I always forget to pick the wrong pin. So it's gonna drop here, 
and then here and here. That's where my new points are. Because, see, I have to go down two. I'm hopping down two, down two. That's my transformation. So my blue dots, the blue dots, those are the dots we're going to go with. And this is what one period is going to look like. And now we just repeat it. So what are my numbers? My numbers are negative one, negative two, negative three, over and over again. Negative one, negative two, negative three. Okay. Oh, I got one more. Okay, so my domain, let's write our asymptote statement. So my first asymptote is because I had to move it, I'm gonna go with the first positive one. Now on the test, if you said it was negative pi over two plus or minus pi n, that's still right. I just usually pick the first one that's on the positive side. So we're gonna pick one of my red asymptotes. So I'm gonna pick this one, which is where? Where is this one at? That's at pi over two. So my asymptotes are at pi over two. And it's plus or minus pi n because my period is pi. So my domain, that's pretty easy. All real numbers, x cannot equal pi over 2 plus or minus pi n. And my range is all real numbers. So now we have graphed all six trig functions. Which one do you think is the hardest? Oh, that's because you just learned it, though. It's okay. Yeah, so that's something I would put on, like, I mean, one, one method of studying is maybe make a flashcard, six flashcards for each ratio, and write some of the key points that you need. And if you don't, I mean, the other thing is if you don't remember where it starts, then just go back to the fact that you know cotangent is cosine over sine and your first asymptote is going to be where sine is zero that is going to be your first asymptote so you're going to have you're going to fill out a unit circle so if you don't remember that it starts at zero well if you remember that sine is zero at zero then i can help you remember that that's, that's one thing to think about. Same thing with tangent. We know that tangent is, um, wait, did I do that backwards? No, I didn't, yes. Yeah, tangent is sine over cosine. So wherever cosine is zero, that's where you're gonna have your first asymptote for tangent, so.